And that, kids, is why you never, ever mess with a human's offspring, Zax Thor chuckled, his tentacles waving in amusement as he finished his tale. The gathered younglings of various species stared at him with wide eyes, mandibles, and assorted sensory organs. A small Valaxian raised a spindly appendage. But Uncle Zax, that can't be true. Humans are our allies now. They wouldn't. They couldn't have been that. Scary. Zax Thor's bioluminescent patches flickered in what passed for a grin among his kind. Oh, you bet your exoskeleton they were. And still are, if you push the wrong buttons. But that's the beauty of it all, isn't it? One minute they're your worst nightmare, and the next they're sharing their bizarre ice cream concoctions with you and teaching you how to dab. The gathered younglings tittered nervously, still processing the horrifying yet fascinating story they'd just heard. Now, now Zack's thought continued, his voice taking on a more serious tone. I know what you're thinking. Uncle Zax is just trying to scare us with old war stories, but let me tell you something. Little ones. This isn't just some tall tale passed down through the generations. I lived through it. I saw it all unfold. And let me tell you, it was a wild ride from start to finish. He paused dramatically, his eye stalk swiveling to take in each of his rapt audience members. Would you like to hear the full story? The real story of how humanity went from being the galaxy's punching bag to its most feared and respected species. A chorus of eager chirps, clicks and whistles answered him. All right, all right, Zax Thor laughed, settling into a more comfortable position. But remember, this isn't just a bedtime story. This is history. Real, terrifying, hilarious history. So pay attention, because there might be a quiz later. He winked with one of his smaller eyes. It all started about, oh, 150 standard cycles ago. Humans had just stumbled onto the galactic stage, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, though not literally, thank the cosmos. Can you imagine? Anyway, they were like newborn quizlicks, all wobbly and confused, but oh so eager to make friends. One of the younglings, a centaurian with glowing antennae, interrupted. But Uncle Zax, I thought you said humans were scary. Patience, little one Zax Thor, chided gently. Every monster has an origin story, even the cuddly ones. He cleared his throat, or what passed for one in his species. Now, where was I? Ah, yes, humans joining the galactic community. See, back then, the galaxy was divided into two major factions, the Kellen Confederation and the Pyration Alliance. Classic good guys vs. Bad guys set up, or so we thought. The Kellen Confederation, being the supposed good guys, naturally reached out to humanity first. Offered them a nice, shiny trade agreement. Humans, bless their naive little hearts, thought they'd hit the jackpot. Little did they know they'd just painted a massive target on their backs. The Amalorian youngling raised a gelatinous pseudopod. But why would a trade agreement be bad? Zax Thor's bioluminescent patches pulsed with mirth. Oh, sweet summer child. In our galaxy, a trade agreement is about as binding as a Flerbian promise, which is to say, not at all. It's basically an engraved invitation saying, hey, look at us, we've got cool stuff and no idea how to defend it. The younglings collectively are hayed in understanding. So there the humans were, feeling all proud of themselves for making new space friends, when Bam Zax Thor smacked two of his tentacles together, causing several younglings to jump. The Pyrishan Alliance came knocking. And by knocking, I mean they started raiding Earth's colonies faster than you can say intergalactic incident. He leaned in conspiratorially. Now, here's where it gets interesting. See, the Pyrations thought they had it all figured out. Humans seemed soft, always going on about peace and diplomacy, plus they had this weird obsession with protecting their young. Can you believe it? Putting children before adults. Madness. The younglings looked at each other in confusion. One brave Arxian spoke up, but... Isn't that normal? Zax Thor laughed. A sound like bubbles popping in tar. For humans? Absolutely. For most of the galaxy? Not so much. Most species out there subscribe to the survival of the fittest school of thought. If a youngling can't hack it, well, that's nature's way of weeding out the weak. Humans. Though... They'd throw themselves into a supernova if it meant saving one of their little ones. He paused, his tone growing more serious. And that, my dear younglings, is where the Pyrations made their fatal mistake. They assumed that this weakness for children made humans easy targets. Oh, how wrong they were. 
Zack Thor's voice took on a dramatic flair. Picture this a piration raid on a human colony. Standard procedure, really. Swoop in, cause some mayhem, grab some loot, maybe rough up a few locals to show who's boss. But then, one trigger-happy piration decides he's had enough of a human infant's crying. The younglings leaned in, their various appendages trembling with anticipation. He shoots the baby. Right in its mother's arms, Zack Thor's voice was barely above a whisper now. And that, my little ones, is when everything went to hell in a Graxon handbasket. He paused, letting the horror of the moment sink in. Then, suddenly, he burst out laughing. Oh, you should have seen the Pyritians' faces. Well, those that survived, anyway. They thought they'd broken the human spirit. Instead, they'd awakened a sleeping giant. A giant with a very particular set of skills, skills that make them a nightmare for species like us. One of the younglings, a timid Vexilian, raised a trembling tendril. W. What happened next, Uncle Zax? Zax Thor's eyes glinted mischievously. What happened, little one? Chaos. Beautiful, terrible chaos. The mother of that child, she went berserk, took down a Pyrishan officer with his own weapon before they could stop her. And let me tell you, nothing spreads faster than a story of a grieving mother beating an alien invader to death with his own gun. He gestured expansively with his tentacles. Suddenly every human on that colony was fighting like they had nothing to lose. Because in their minds they didn't. The Pyrishans had crossed a line, and the humans. They erased that line, set fire to the paper it was drawn on, and then nuked the ashes for good measure. The younglings were hanging on his every word now, a mix of horror and awe on their alien faces. The Pyrations, being the brilliant strategists they were. Zax Thor continued, his voice dripping with sarcasm, decided that the best course of action was to double down. Hey, they thought, if these humans care so much about their young, let's threaten to kill more of them. That'll make them surrender for sure. He paused, shaking his head in mock disbelief. I swear, sometimes I think the Pyrrhicians were trying to win a galactic award for worst decision-making. Because you know what that threat did. It united humanity like nothing else could have. Suddenly, it wasn't just about defending their colonies anymore. It was about ensuring the survival of their entire species. Zack Thor's voice took on a more somber tone. You see, kids, humans have this saying, mess with the bull, you get the horns, except in this case, it was more like mess with our children and will turn your entire civilization into cosmic dust. He leaned back, his tentacles relaxing slightly. The next few years, well, they were something to behold. Humans, this species that had barely figured out how to leave their own solar system, suddenly became the most terrifying force in the galaxy. They didn't just fight the Pyrrhicians, they hunted them. Across star systems, through nebulae, into the darkest corners of space, one of the braver younglings, a Xeraxian with iridescent scales, spoke up. But how? The Pyrrhicians were more advanced, weren't they? Zax Thor chuckled darkly. Oh, sweet summer child, advanced technology is nice, sure, but a parent fighting for their child. That's a force that makes supernovas look like firecrackers. He continued, his voice taking on a more animated tone, humans. They got creative. They turned their civilian ships into warships. They weaponized their entertainment industry, pumping out propaganda that would make a Thraxian blush. They even managed to hack into Pyration communication systems and blast something called Baby Shark on repeat. I still have nightmares about that, by the way. The younglings giggled nervously, not quite sure if they should be amused or terrified. But, here's the kicker Zax Thor said, leaning in conspiratorially. The humans didn't just fight. They started making friends. Big, powerful friends. Remember the Kellen Confederation? Well, they took one look at what the humans were doing to the Pyrrhicians and thought, huh, maybe we should be on their good side. He waved a tentacle dismissively. Of course, the Kellens tried to play it cool at first. Oh, we're just engaging in some light arms trading. Nothing to see here, but let me tell you, kids, there's nothing light about giving a species like humanity access to antimatter weaponry. The youngling's eyes widened collectively, a feat impressive given the variety of visual organs present. Within a few short years, Zax Thor continued, his voice rising dramatically, the mighty Pyrrhician alliance, terror of the spaceways for centuries, 
was reduced to a footnote in galactic history. Their fleets, scrap metal. Their bases, cosmic dust. Their fearsome reputation, about as intimidating as a fluffian with a sore throat. He paused, letting the magnitude of the change sink in. And do you know what the humans did then? After they'd exterminated a threat that had plagued the galaxy for generations. The younglings leaned in, their various sensory appendages quivering with anticipation. Zack Thor's bioluminescent patches flickered in what could only be described as a smirk. They invited everyone over for a barbecue. A collective gasp of confusion rippled through his audience. I know. I know Zack Thor chuckled. I didn't believe it either at first. But there it was, an open invitation to every species in the galaxy. Hey, we just finished kicking some serious alien butt. Want to come over and eat some grilled meat while we talk about peace? He shook his head in bemused wonder. And you know what? Most of us showed up. Partly out of curiosity, partly out of fear, and partly because, well, free food is free food, right? The younglings nodded sagely, clearly understanding the universal appeal of a free meal. So there we were, Zax Thor continued, his voice taking on a more reflective tone. Representatives from every corner of the galaxy, standing on the soil of a planet that, just a few years earlier, most of us had never even heard of. The humans were not what we expected. He paused, seemingly lost in thought. They were happy, genuinely, unabashedly happy. Here they were, fresh from a war that would have broken most species, and they were cracking jokes, sharing drinks, and trying to teach everyone something called the Macarena. A quizlick youngling raised a trembling antenna. But weren't they angry? After everything that happened, Zack Thor's eyes softened. Oh, they were angry, all right. But here's the thing about humans, they have this incredible capacity to compartmentalize. The ones who had fought, who had lost loved ones. They were still grieving, still angry. But they channeled that anger into rebuilding, into making sure it never happened again. He gestured expansively. And the rest? They welcomed us with open arms. Literally, in some cases. Do you know how disconcerting it is to have a species that just proved they could wipe you out of existence try to hug you? Very disconcerting. Let me tell you. The younglings chittered and chirped in amusement. But here's the real kicker, Zax Thor said, his voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. As we all stood there, eating our hot dogs, don't ask, just trust me on this one. The human leader stepped up to make a speech. We all tensed up, expecting. Well, I don't know what we expected. Threats. Demands. A list of new galactic laws written in the blood of their enemies. He chuckled, shaking his head. Instead, do you know what they said? Welcome, friends. We're glad you could make it. We hope this is the beginning of a new era of peace and cooperation in the galaxy. Now, who wants to learn how to play volleyball? The younglings looked at each other in confusion. One brave Arxian spoke up. But, that's it? No revenge? No galactic domination? Zax Thor's bioluminescent patches pulsed with mirth. Oh, my sweet summer child. That was the revenge. That was the domination because in that moment every single species represented there realized something terrifying we didn't understand humans at all. He leaned back, his tentacles relaxing. See, kids, most species in the galaxy operate on pretty simple principles. You fight for resources, for territory, for status. If you win, you take what you want and subjugate the losers. It's a dance as old as the stars themselves. But humans, he shook his head in wonder. They fought like demons to protect their young, sure. But once the threat was gone, they just wanted to make friends and play games. It was unsettling. Because if they could switch from ruthless warriors to friendly neighbors that quickly, what else were they capable of? The younglings were silent, processing this new information. And that, my little ones, Zax Thor said, his voice taking on a more serious tone, is why humans are both the most terrifying and the most beloved species in the galaxy. Because you never quite know which version you're going to get. The fierce protectors who will tear apart star systems to save a single child, or the goofy neighbors who want to teach you how to make something, called S. Moors. He chuckled softly. The answer, of course, is both. Always both. And that's what makes them so dangerous, and so invaluable as allies. A small Valaxian raised a trembling appendage. But Uncle Zax, if humans are so scary, why are they our friends now? Zax Thor's eyes twinkled with amusement. Ah, now that's the real question, isn't it? 
and the answer is both simple and complex. You see, humans have this bizarre ability to forgive, not forget. Mind you, they've got memories like Thoraxian data banks when it comes to grudges. But forgive. Oh boy, can they forgive. He leaned in, his voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. Let me let you in on a little secret. The real reason the galaxy embraced humanity after the war. Fear. Pure. Unadulterated. Oh sweet cosmos, please don't let them point those weapons at us. Fear. The younglings gasped collectively, their various appendages trembling. Oh yes, Sax Thor continued, clearly enjoying the drama. You see, after the humans finished mopping the floor with the Pyrishan Alliance, every other species in the galaxy had the same thought by the cosmic void. What if they decide to come after us next? He waved his tentacles in an exaggerated shrug. Can you blame us? We just watched a species go from barely able to leave their own solar system to capable of exterminating an interstellar empire in the span of a few years. It was like watching a quislic larvae suddenly sprout fangs and start eating Thraxian battle cruisers for breakfast. The younglings giggled nervously at the mental image. So there we were, Zax Thor went on, his voice taking on a more conspiratorial tone. All of us advanced species, trying to figure out how to deal with the humans without, you know, accidentally triggering galactic Armageddon. And what do the humans do? They invite us over for a cookout. He paused dramatically, his eyes stalk swiveling to take in each of his rapt audience members. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to a human cookout, but let me tell you, it's an experience. This fire involved voluntarily, and they use it to char animal flesh, which they then consume with great gusto. It's terrifying and oddly fascinating at the same time. A brave centaurian raised a glowing antenna. But Uncle Zax, why would they invite everyone over if they were so scary? Zax Thor's bioluminescent patches pulsed with what could only be described as a smirk. Ah, now that's the million credit question, isn't it? And the answer is... Drum roll, please, he paused as the younglings obligingly made various percussion-like sounds. Because humans are weird. He chuckled at the confused looks on the younglings' faces. No, really, that's the answer. Humans are just... Weird. See, most species, after winning a war like that, would be all about consolidating power, making demands, maybe subjugating a planet or two. You know, normal post-war stuff. But humans, he shook his head in mock disbelief. They were like, Hey, we just finished this nasty business of turning a bunch of pirates into space dust. How about we all get together, eat some burned animal parts, and talk about how we can all just get along it was. Disconcerting, to say the least. The younglings looked at each other clearly trying to wrap their various sensory organs around this concept. Now, don't get me wrong, Zax Thor continued, his tone becoming more serious. We weren't exactly rushing to RSVP to this little shindig. I mean, would you want to be the first one to show up at a party thrown by the species that just demonstrated they could probably wipe out half the galaxy before their morning coffee? He paused, letting the gravity of the situation sink in. But here's the kicker we all showed up anyway. No why. The younglings leaned in, their curiosity palpable. Because we were even more afraid of what might happen if we didn't show up, Zax Thor said with a wry chuckle. I mean, think about it. If you got an invitation from the scariest new kid on the galactic block, would you want to be the one to say no thanks? I'm washing my tentacles that day. The younglings shook their heads vigorously, clearly understanding the logic. So there we all were, Zax Thor continued, his voice taking on a more reflective tone representatives from every corner of the galaxy, standing on the soil of a planet that most of us couldn't even pronounce correctly. We were all tense, expecting. Well, I don't know what we were expecting. A show of force? A list of demands? Maybe a demonstration of whatever terrifying new weapons they'd cooked up? He paused for dramatic effect. And you know what we got instead? A lecture on the importance of recycling. The younglings blinked in confusion, their various optical organs struggling to process this information. I kid you not, Zax Thor said, barely containing his laughter. There we were, the most powerful beings in the known universe, quaking in our various exoskeletons, and the humans decide to talk about the proper sorting of waste materials. Apparently they'd noticed our various space fleets weren't exactly eco-friendly. He shook his head in bemused wonder. Can you imagine? They'd just finished a war that reshaped the political landscape of the galaxy, and they were worried about our carbon footprint. 
it was. Well, it was very human of them. A small vexillion raised a trembling tendril. But Uncle Zax, weren't they angry? After everything that happened, Zax Thor's eyes softened. Oh, they were angry, all right. Make no mistake about that. But here's the thing about humans, they have this incredible capacity to compartmentalize. The ones who had fought, who had lost loved ones. They were still grieving, still angry. But they channeled that anger into something. Constructive. He gestured expansively. Instead of demanding reparations or threatening retaliation, they proposed. Cooperation. Hey, they said, we've all seen what happens when we fight each other. How about we try working together for a change? The younglings chittered and chirped in confusion. One brave Arxian spoke up, but why? They won. They could have taken whatever they wanted. Zax Thor's bioluminescent patches pulsed with what could only be described as a proud smile. And that, my little ones, is why humans are so fascinating. Because to them, winning doesn't mean taking everything for themselves. It means creating a situation where everyone can win. He leaned back, his tentacles relaxing. Of course it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows, whatever those are. There were tense moments, heated arguments, more than a few diplomatic incidents involving something called karaoke, but slowly, surely, we all started to realize something. The younglings leaned in, their various sensory appendages quivering with anticipation. We realized, Zax Thor said softly, that the humans weren't just pretending. They genuinely wanted peace. They genuinely wanted to work together. And most terrifyingly of all, they genuinely believed it was possible. He chuckled softly. Do you know how unsettling it is to have the most militarily powerful species in the galaxy look at you with big, hopeful eyes and ask if you want to join their intergalactic book club? Very unsettling, let me tell you. The younglings giggled. The tension in the room finally starting to dissipate. But here's the real kicker, Zax Thor said, his voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. As strange and scary as the humans could be, we all started to realize something else. Something that scared us even more than their military might or their bizarre obsession with putting cheese on everything. He paused dramatically, his eye stalk swiveling to take in each of his rapt audience members. We realized we liked them. The younglings gasped collectively, a feat impressive given the variety of respiratory systems present. Oh yes, Sax Thorne nodded sagely. Slowly but surely we all started to fall under the human spell. Their boundless optimism, their creativity, their ability to find humour in even the darkest situations it was infectious. Before we knew it, we were trading recipes, sharing stories, even Cosmos help us participating in their sports. He shuddered dramatically. Do you know how ridiculous a Thoraxian looks trying to play something called basketball? Very ridiculous. But also very fun, as it turns out. The younglings were hanging on his every word now, a mix of awe and amusement on their alien faces. And that, my little ones, Zax Thor said, his voice taking on a more serious tone, is the real reason humans are both the most terrifying and the most beloved species in the galaxy. Because they have this incredible ability to make you believe in the impossible. To make you want to be better, to do better. He leaned forward, his voice dropping to a near whisper. But never, ever forget underneath all that friendliness, all that optimism, there's still the species that took down the Pyrrhusian Alliance. The species that will tear apart star systems to protect their young. The species that turned Baby Shark into a weapon of mass disruption. The younglings nodded solemnly, clearly understanding the gravity of his words. So remember. Zax Thor continued, his tone lightening. When you're sharing a meal with a human, or playing one of their bizarre video games, or helping them with their latest crazy scheme to save the whales, or whatever, remember that you're dealing with a species of contradictions. A species that can be your best friend or your worst nightmare, often in the span of a single conversation. He chuckled softly. But mostly remember this humans are weird. Wonderfully, terrifyingly, hilariously weird. And our galaxy is all the better for it. Zax Thor leaned back, clearly satisfied with his tale. And that, my little ones, is the true story of how humanity went from being the galaxy's punching bag to its most feared and respected species. Any questions? A forest of appendages shot up, accompanied by a cacophony of chirps, clicks and whistles. Zax Thor laughed, a sound like bubbles popping in tar. All right, all right, one at a time. You there, the little Malorian, what's your question? 
The small, gelatinous creature wobbled excitedly. Uncle Zax, is it true that humans can't regrow their limbs? How do they survive? Zax Thor's eyes twinkled with amusement. Oh, that's just the tip of the iceberg, little one. Not only can they not regrow limbs, but they also can't photosynthesize. They have to sleep for a third of every day cycle. And they're mostly made of water. It's a miracle they made it off their home planet at all. The younglings chittered in disbelief. A Zyraxian with iridescent scales spoke up next. But Uncle Zax, if humans are so fragile, how did they become so powerful? Zax Thor's bioluminescent patches pulsed thoughtfully. Ah, now that's a question worthy of a cosmonaut philosopher. The short answer? Determination, creativity, and an absolutely bonkers ability to adapt. He gestured expansively with his tentacles. See, humans have this saying, necessity is the mother of invention, and let me tell you, when your species can't regrow limbs, can't breathe underwater, can't survive extreme temperatures without help well, you get real inventive real quick. The younglings nodded, clearly fascinated. But here's the real secret, Zax Thor continued his voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. Humans are stubborn. And I don't mean Thoraxian arguing over the last slice of grav cake stubborn. I mean the laws of physics are more like guidelines stubborn. He chuckled at the confused looks on the younglings' faces. Let me put it this way. If you tell a human something is impossible, they don't get discouraged. They get excited. Because to them, impossible just means hasn't been done yet. A small Valaxian raised a trembling appendage. But Uncle Zax isn't that dangerous. Zax Thor's eyes softened. Oh, absolutely. Humans are walking disaster zones. Half their scientific discoveries seem to happen because someone looked at a deadly substance and thought, I wonder what would happen if I ate that. He shook his head in bemused wonder. But that's also what makes them so invaluable as allies. Because when the rest of us look at a problem and see an insurmountable obstacle, humans see a challenge. And there's nothing humans love more than a good challenge. The younglings chittered excitedly, clearly warming up to the idea of these strange, contradictory creatures. Any more questions Zax Thor asked, his tentacles waving encouragingly. A brave Arxian spoke up, its exoskeleton shimmering with nervousness. Uncle Zax, you said humans are our friends now. But, are they safe? Should we be scared of them? Zax Thor's bioluminescent patches pulsed with what could only be described as a fond smile. Ah, now that's the question, isn't it? And the answer is yes and no. And maybe, all at once. He leaned forward, his voice taking on a more serious tone. See kids, humans alike. Like a Zorbanian star whale. Majestic, fascinating, capable of incredible acts of beauty and kindness. But also immensely powerful, and potentially very dangerous if provoked or threatened. The younglings nodded solemnly, clearly understanding the analogy. But here's the thing Zax Thor continued his voice softening. Humans don't want to be feared. They want to be understood to be friends. They'll go to incredible lengths to avoid conflict, to find peaceful solutions. But if you threaten what they care about, especially their young well, let's just say it's better to be on their good side. He chuckled softly. Luckily for us, their good side is a pretty great place to be. They're loyal friends, endlessly curious, always up for a good time. Did you know they have over a thousand different types of what they call games? and that's not even counting the digital ones. The younglings eyes widened in amazement, their various appendages wriggling with excitement. Oh yes, Sax Thor nodded, his eye stalks bobbing enthusiastically. Humans will turn anything into a game. Throwing small objects into slightly larger objects. Game. Chasing each other around while holding a ball. Game. Sitting quietly and moving little carved figures on a checkered board. You guessed it, game. He leaned back, his tentacles waving lazily. And don't even get me started on their sports, entire industries built around watching humans do increasingly ridiculous things with balls of various sizes and shapes. It's absurd. It's pointless. And it's absolutely addictive. The younglings chittered and chirped in amusement, clearly intrigued by these strange human pastimes. But you know what the really crazy thing is? Zax Thor continued, his voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. They invited us to play with them. Can you believe it? The species that had just demonstrated they could probably wipe out half the galaxy before breakfast, and they're asking if we want to join their fantasy football leagues. He shook his head in bemused wonder. Of course it took some. 
adjustments. Turns out, having seven limbs of varying lengths isn't exactly an advantage in most human sports. Who knew? The younglings giggled, no doubt imagining the sight of various alien species attempting human athletics. But that's the thing about humans, Zax Thor said, his tone becoming more reflective. They don't just accept differences, they celebrate them. Before we knew it, they were inventing new games that played to the strengths of each species. You should see the Arcturian Zero Gravity Lacrosse Leagues. Now that's entertainment. A small quizlick raised a trembling antenna. But Uncle Zax, if humans are so nice, why were they so scary during the war? Zax Thor's eyes softened. Ah, now that's a good question, little one. And the answer is... Complicated. See humans alike. Like a vexillian mood crystal. They can change rapidly depending on the situation. He leaned forward, his voice taking on a more serious tone. When they're at peace, when they feel safe, humans are wonderful. Kind, generous, always ready with a joke or a helping hand. But threaten them, or worse, threaten those they care about. And, well, let's just say you wouldn't like them when they're angry. The younglings nodded solemnly, clearly understanding the gravity of his words. But here's the really interesting thing Zax Thor continued, his voice brightening. Even at their scariest, even in the middle of a war, humans never lost that. That essential humanity. Do you know what they did after they won each battle against the Parishins? The younglings shook their heads, their various sensory organs quivering with curiosity. They tried to help the survivors, Zax Thor said softly. Can you believe it? One minute they're unleashing weapons that could crack a planet, and the next they're setting up field hospitals for the enemy wounded. It was. Confusing, to say the least. He chuckled softly. I remember intercepting some Pyrrhician communications during the war. They were absolutely baffled. Why are the humans giving us medical supplies, they kept asking. Is it a trick? Are they trying to poison us? They just couldn't understand that humans could be both ruthless warriors and compassionate healers at the same time. The younglings looked at each other, clearly struggling to wrap their minds around this concept. And that, my little one, Zax Thor said, his voice taking on a more serious tone, is why humans are both the most terrifying and the most beloved species in the galaxy, because they contain multitudes. They can be your worst nightmare or your best friend, often in the span of a single day. He leaned back, his tentacles relaxing. But mostly they're just... people. People who want to live in peace, who want to explore the universe, who want to make friends with every weird and wonderful species they come across even if those friends have too many limbs and a tendency to explode when startled. The younglings giggled, clearly warming up to the idea of these strange, contradictory creatures. So, to answer your question, Zax Thor continued, addressing the small quizlick, humans aren't scary because they want to be. They're scary because they have to be sometimes, but given the choice, they'd much rather share a meal with you than fight you. He chuckled softly. They'll be careful if they invite you for something called spicy food. Trust me on this one, your taste buds will thank you later. The younglings chittered excitedly, clearly fascinated by these bizarre human customs. Any more questions, Zax Thor asked, his tentacles waving encouragingly. A brave centaurian with glowing antennae spoke up. Uncle Zax, you said humans have all these games and sports, but what do they do for real fun? You know, important stuff. Zax Thor's bioluminescent patches pulsed with what could only be described as a mischievous grin. Oh, my sweet summer child, you have no idea. Humans have elevated fun to an art form. An entire industry, even. He leaned forward conspiratorially. Have you ever heard of something called memes? The younglings shook their heads, their curiosity palpable. Well, buckle up, kid Zax Thor said, rubbing his tentacles together gleefully. You're in for a wild ride. You see, humans have this bizarre ability to find humour in. Well, everything. And I mean everything. They'll take the most mundane image, slap some text on it, and suddenly it's the funniest thing in the galaxy. He paused, clearly enjoying the confused looks on the younglings' faces. Oh, and don't even get me started on their internet, it's like. Imagine if you took all the knowledge in the universe, mixed it with every joke ever told, added a healthy dose of adorable animal pictures, and then let it all stew in a vat of pure, unfiltered weirdness. That's the human internet. The younglings looked at each other, clearly trying to process this information. 
But you know what the really crazy thing is, Zack's Thor continued, his voice filled with wonder. They share it all. With everyone. For free. Can you believe it? Millennia of art, literature, science, philosophy, all at your fingertips. Along with, I might add, a truly alarming number of videos of small furry creatures doing silly things. He shook his head in bemused wonder. The first time I saw a cat video, I thought it was some kind of elaborate psychological warfare. Turns out humans just really, really like watching their pets be idiots. Go figure. The younglings chittered and chirped in amusement, clearly intrigued by these strange human pastimes. But you want to know the best part, Zax Thor said, his voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. They invited us to join in. Can you believe it? The species that had just demonstrated they could harness the power of stars and they're asking if we want to participate in something called a meme war. He chuckled softly. Of course it took some. Adjustments. Turns out humor doesn't always translate well across species. The first time a human tried to explain the concept of a dad joke to a Thoraxian diplomat, we nearly had an interstellar incident. The younglings giggled, no doubt imagining the cultural misunderstandings that must have ensued. But that's the thing about human, Zax Thor said, his tone becoming more reflective. They don't just accept differences, they revel in them. Before we knew it, we were all exchanging jokes, sharing stories, trying to one-up each other with increasingly ridiculous memes. It was. Well, it was fun. He leaned back, a look of contentment on his alien features. And that, my little ones, is perhaps the greatest gift the humans have given have given us. They reminded us how to have fun. How to laugh, how to play, how to enjoy life just for the sake of enjoying it. Zax Thor's voice softened. In all our millennia of space travel, of building vast empires and advanced civilizations, somehow we'd forgotten that. We'd gotten so caught up in power and politics that we'd lost sight of the simple joys of existence. He gestured expansively with his tentacles. But the humans? They never forgot. Even in the darkest times, even in the middle of a war that could have ended their species, they never stopped laughing, never stopped creating never stopped finding beauty and humour in the universe around them. The younglings were silent now, hanging on his every word. And that, Zax Thor said softly, is why humans are the most important species in the galaxy, not because of their military might, or their technological advancements, or even their bizarre ability to turn anything into a competition, but because they remind the rest of us what it means to be truly alive. He looked at each of the younglings in turn, his eyes filled with a mix of fondness and seriousness. So remember, little ones, when you encounter humans and trust me, you will remember this, they may be weird, they may be scary, they may do things that make absolutely no sense to you. But they are also kind and brave and endlessly fascinating. They are our friends, our allies, and yes, sometimes our conscience. Zax Thor's voice took on a note of finality. Most importantly, remember this, humans are just people, like us. They have hopes and fears, strengths and weaknesses, moments of great wisdom and moments of utter foolishness. Treat them with respect, learn from them, laugh with them and who knows. You might just find yourself having the adventure of a lifetime. He leaned back, clearly satisfied with his tale. And that, my little ones, is the true story of humanity's place in our galaxy. Any final questions before we call it a night? The younglings looked at each other, their various appendages wiggling with excitement and curiosity. But before any of them could speak, a new voice cut through the air. Yeah, I've got a question, the voice said, tinged with amusement. Who are you calling little one Zax? Last I checked, most of these kids are taller than you. Zax Thor spun around, his eye stalks swiveling wildly. There, leaning against the doorframe with a grin that could only be described as shit-eating, stood a human. Sarah Zaxthor exclaimed, his bioluminescent patches pulsing with surprise and delight. I didn't hear you come in. How long have you been standing there? The human, Sarah, pushed herself off the doorframe and sauntered into the room. Oh, long enough to hear you spinning wild tales about us terrible, wonderful humans, she winked at the younglings, who were staring at her with a mix of awe and trepidation. Don't believe everything this old blob tells you, kids. We're not nearly as scary as he makes us out to be. Zaxthor huffed a sound like air escaping from a punctured balloon. I'll have you know, Sarah, that every word I said was true. Mostly. From a certain point of view. Sarah laughed. 
a sound that seemed to fill the room with warmth. Oh, I don't doubt it. You always did have a flair for the dramatic she turned to the younglings, her smile softening. But seriously, kids, don't be afraid of us. We're just people, like you. We put our pants on one leg at a time, just like everybody else. She paused, looking around at the diverse array of alien physiologies. Well, those of us who wear pants and have legs anyway. You know what I mean. The younglings chittered and chirped in amusement, their earlier nervousness melting away in the face of Sarah's easy charm. Now, then Sarah said, clapping her hands together, who wants to hear about the time Zax Thor here tried to eat a jalapeno pepper thinking it was a type of candy? As the room erupted in excited chatter, Zax Thor's bioluminescent patches pulsed with what could only be described as a blush. Sarah, please, not that story. But it was too late. The younglings were already gathering around Sarah, their various appendages waving in excitement. As she launched into her tail, punctuated by frequent bursts of laughter, Zax Thor couldn't help but smile. This, he thought to himself, was what made humans so special. Their ability to turn strangers into friends, to find common ground across vast gulfs of biology and culture. To make the galaxy feel a little bit smaller, a little bit friendlier. As he settled in to listen to Sarah's story, which, he had to admit, was pretty funny in hindsight, Zack's Thor felt a wave of contentment wash over him. The galaxy was a big, often scary place. But with friends like this, it was also a wonderful one. And that, he decided, was the real story worth telling.